So here's a fact that is definitely not obvious at first. If we have any number field E that contains the number square root of 3 minus the square root of 2, if that's all we know about it, then we can prove that that field must contain the square root of 2 by itself and the square root of 3 by itself. How do we prove such a thing? Well, because E is a field, it's in particular a ring, and so it's closed under multiplication. So if this field contains alpha, it also has to contain alpha squared, alpha cubed, and all the higher powers of alpha as well. Those all must be elements of E. Well, if alpha is square root of 3 minus square root of 2, we can directly compute that alpha squared is 5 minus 2 square root of 6, and alpha cubed is negative 11 square root of 2 plus 9 square root of 3. Now the idea is to take these numbers and form some linear combination of them with rational coefficients and make that linear combination equal to the square root of 2, or the square root of 3. Which rational linear combination do we need? To find that out, we just have to solve the system of equations that we get by insisting that a linear combination of, let's say, 1, alpha, alpha squared, and alpha cubed is equal to the square root of 2, where the coefficients of that linear combination are all rational. So a, b, c, and d here should be rational numbers. Well, let's plop in what we computed alpha, alpha squared, and alpha cubed to be, and then collect all of our coefficients. Instead of by 1, alpha, alpha squared, and alpha cubed, now let's correct, uh, collect them together by 1, square root of 2, square root of 3, and square root of 6. When we do that, the coefficient of 1 is a plus 5c. The coefficient of the square root of 6 is negative 2c. The coefficient of the square root of 2 is negative b minus 11d. And the coefficient of the square root of 3 is b plus 9d. Meanwhile, on the right-hand side, if we have just the square root of 2, then the coefficients in that same basis are 0, 1, 0, and 0. If we believe that 1, square root of 2, square root of 3, and square root of 6 are all linearly independent over the rational numbers, then we can equate the coefficients on the left and right-hand sides of this equation and get the 4 by 4 linear system, a plus 5c equals 0, negative b minus 11d is equal to 1, b plus 9d is equal to 0, and negative 2c is equal to 0. Here's a 4 by 4 linear system of equations. If this linear system has a solution, then in particular, that solution has to be a set of rational numbers. After all, we have a linear system here whose coefficients are all rational. And because it's a linear system, when we solve it using the principles of linear algebra, the result is also going to belong to the field of rationals. So we know a, b, c, and d are going to be rational if we can solve this system. So this system doesn't have a solution. Well, since negative 2c was equal to 0, we get that c must be 0 pretty quickly. And if c is 0, plugging that into the first equation shows us that a has to be 0 as well. So we're halfway there. Now taking the second and the third equations and adding them together to eliminate b, we find out that negative 2d has to be equal to 1, and therefore d is negative 1 half. And if d is negative 1 half, plugging that into the third equation gives us b minus 9 halves equals 0, whence b is equal to 9 halves. So in fact, there we have a solution to this system of equations, all of whose coefficients now are rational numbers. Plugging that back into our original statement, we find out that 0 times 1 plus 9 halves times alpha plus 0 times alpha squared plus negative a half times alpha cubed is equal to radical 2. Simplifying that out, we find that we can write the number square root of 2 as 9 halves alpha minus 1 half alpha cubed. And since both alpha and alpha cubed belong to E, and because e is a field, it's therefore closed under addition as well. That means that the square root of 2, because we can write it in this fashion, must also belong to e. The same logic can also be used to solve the corresponding system of equations, which proves that 11 halves alpha minus 1 half alpha cubed is equal to the square root of 3, and therefore the square root of 3 must also belong to e. So surprise, surprise, we can't have square root of 3 minus the square root of 2 in a field unless we have square root of 2 and square root of 3 individually in that field.